Ministry of Health believes Grenada is in a better position now to monitor and execute its COVID response. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Monday, January 3rd, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles says Grenada's ability to conduct genetic sequencing to detect new variants has put the country in a better position to monitor, plan and execute a response in the event of an outbreak of the Omicron variant. However, he warns that Grenadians must be prepared to play their part in preventing the spread of the virus. The Ministry of Health on December 31st announced the discovery of 11 positive cases of the new variant on Ireland. On Monday, during an interview on the television program The Next Chapter with Information Officer Kevil Fedrick, Dr. Charles said Grenadians must take the virus seriously since the experiences of every country will vary. Research on the Omicron variant shows that although it is not as deadly, it is spread at a quicker rate and much easier than the Delta variant. We um, developed the capacity in our own lab to do PCR testing. Now we have um, you know, attained the capacity to do genetic sequencing here locally. And as such, we are now able to um, you know, better detect uh, these new variants of the COVID and, you know, the, the, this, this, this one that we are discussing right now, which is Omicron, we are now in a better position and we are able to uh, detect, identify and, you know, make decisions based on these new capacities uh, that we have. So all of these are part of the incremental improvements in our whole approach to um, this COVID-19 response. He said although it is still too early to detect the impact Omicron will have on the country's health sector, the ministry continues to modify its response campaign. All right. We are noticing increasing number of cases because we have the introduction of a new variant. All right. It is once again going to infect a large numbers of persons um, if, we, uh, if we are not careful. All right. It's very early to say just how bad it's going to be. But, you know, we, we just urge everyone to be vigilant at this point. This variant introduced a lot of uncertainty. It arose very quickly. And with our, our, our recent experience with COVID, we know that it, it, it was quite challenging. All right. And I mean, it's, it has been a similar scenario in many countries, but this variant did not give us time to consider all of the possibilities that can happen. So right now, when you peruse most literature, they're telling you it is still too early to say how serious this is going to be because we simply do not have enough um, information to work with and the uncertainty is 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 um is quite challenging to date there are 443 active cases on island dr charles emphasized the importance of covid 19 vaccines and the booster shot in the fight against the virus at present what has been observed in the short term is that there's a waning of of, of immunity and uh, and as a result a, a booster shot yeah. is is um a booster shot or a third dose is recommended to basically, um, you know, trigger or, you know, give you a little added push, you know, of, of protection. More than $200,000 have been invested in retrofitting a section of the Princess Alice Hospital in Maribo to house an operation theater and to construct staff quarters and a laundry room. This is part of the ministry's ongoing plans to improve services offered and to decentralize health care to better serve the people. 
Permanent Secretary with Responsibility for Hospital and Community Health Services, Hannah Julian St. Paul, informed of the work in progress during the GIS year in review. P.S. Julian St. Paul said while COVID-19 has been the forefront of all conversations, government has been addressing other areas in the health sector. One of our goals as hospital and community is the decentralization of service and access to care. So we believe that persons should be able to be serviced where they live. And we are now putting an operating theater at the Princess Alice Hospital. A staff lunch is being built with laundry services. And we can appreciate that with the pandemic that we have just um, lived through. And that is, would be um, approximately over $200,000 in um, infrastructural work that is going to be done. The upgrade of the facility to house the operating theatre is timely based on a number of factors. Under our OECS Regional Health Project, we are going to be doing upgrading to our operating theatre at the General Hospital. And in order for us not to disrupt services, we have to ensure that we have an alternative. And this is where the operating theatre at Princess Alice Hospital Welcome. comes in. She added that work is also ongoing on installing new equipment on the Phase 2 of the General Hospital Project in St. George's. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. Protect yourself and our community from COVID-19. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 70% alcohol. Use a tissue when blowing your nose, sneezing, or coughing. Immediately discard the tissue properly and wash or sanitize your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Let's do our part to ensure that each and every Grenadian remains healthy. To stay up to date, visit the Government of Grenada's webpage or the Ministry of Health's Facebook page. For more information, contact the Ministry of Health's hotline by calling 53-VIRUS. This has been a public service announcement brought to you by the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. Schools, students, teachers and staff were covered in prayer on Monday as part of the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Development, Religious Affairs and Information's annual exercise to commence the Hillary school term. The hour of prayer formed part of each school's assembly to begin the new term. Education Minister Honorable Emmeline Pear encouraged the principals to develop school-specific plans to give special attention to vulnerable and disadvantaged students. She said school must be redefined, with parents also playing a greater role in being support systems in their child's learning. So as we open for exit grades in week one and prepare for a full reopening in week two, let us consider the psychosocial health and the holistic development of our children. Special attention must be given to vulnerable and disadvantaged students. Now more than ever, there is a need to utilize differentiated learning strategies in classrooms. This term, we encourage schools to pay special attention to the core areas and focus on competencies that are critical for children's development. Let us ensure that social emotional learning is featured in the classroom and opportunities provided for extracurricular activities whilst observing the protocols. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Norman Gilbert, highlighted the importance of having God at the center of education and our daily lives. As we begin this term of work, we want to put God at the center of all that we do. Despite the many challenges of COVID-19 pandemic and the situation that the world is facing, there is only one true answer, and that is for us to believe in a super, supreme being and to put our trust in God as we seek to advance our academic development of our nation's children throughout the entire island. 
Pastor Joachim Philip and Reverend Silbert Prescott also had words of encouragement for parents and students as they embark on their educational journey during an uncertain period. For parents, I'm encouraging you. I encourage your children. It is a time for us to bottle down, let's get going, and the children's education become a priority. Teachers, of course, the teachers have to play their role of giving the best education that they can in a time when resources might be limited, difficulty might be on the horizon, COVID-19 threatening, and so we have to do the best and safest things that teachers would do, putting your best foot forward. If you want to achieve anything in life, you have to be prepared to push ahead of rejection, disappointments, challenges. If you want to build a legacy of excellence, if you want to make it in anything, you have to be willing to persevere, to press on, even when the going is tough. The exercise also included inspirational singing from individuals and church groups. On Friday, the Ministry of Education, under the guidance of the Ministry of Health, announced the return of only students in exit classes for the first week, January 3rd to the 7th. Finally, in the news, with 2022 dubbed the Year of Innovation and Transformation by the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands, Forestry, Senior managers are now charting the way for greater efficiency. This follows their participation in a recent strategic retreat to review the achievements and challenges of the sector over the past year. The ministry now plans to build on the outcomes of 2021 and continue its efforts to improve food safety, increase food and nutrition security, and increase the economic returns from the agricultural sector and a major export earner. Reflecting on the past year that was challenged by the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and noting the progress made, Minister for Agriculture, Lands and Forestry, Honorable Peter David, commended members of the management team for their efforts, which have begun to bear fruit. The sector grew by 12.5% in 2021 after contracting by 12.2% in 2020. Everybody's talking about agriculture and the importance of agriculture. We touch every single aspect of our society. We are, in no uncertain terms, the foundation on which our society is built. Last year we spoke about increasing production and we did achieve that objective through the Grand Barrier State, through assisting farmers, through our interaction with all of our farming community, we did achieve. Maybe not as much as we could have, but we did go some way. But there will be no development of agriculture in this country if we don't innovate and transform. And that is why we are talking about innovation and transformation. Permanent Secretary Elvis Morain says the deliberations put the ministry in a good position to amplify the success of 2021 and focus on 2022 to make an impact within the sector. It makes good reading for us going forward 2022. What we need to do is to get to the level where we can implement our plans and our programs. If we can work together as a unit, we can achieve much, much more. One of us is as smart as all of us, right? And again, that basically gives us credits for working as a team. So none of us is as smart as all of us. So if we can put ourselves together and work, we will, we will have differences, we can be different, yeah? But if we can put aside our personal differences and find ways for us to work together. I think at the end of the day, we can all be very proud of our achievements. Let us begin to, to hit the ground running in 2022, right? Let us have the right conversation. Let us implement 
So at least we can make that impact. The sector will receive an injection of EC $35 million towards transformational projects with strategic areas to include project implementation, increased use of technology, innovation, entrepreneurship, productivity, and competitiveness. That story just ended the national report for Monday, January 3rd. Let's recap the top story. Ministry of Health believes Grenada is in a better position now to monitor and execute its COVID response. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.